Okay, so this short talk you can see it's called Swift Quiz. It's not the kind of uh, Kahoot quiz, so we won't need to download an app or answer quickly or anything else. I have three questions for you that kind of each focus on uh, some edge case we could say of uh, the Swift language. And so the goal is to try and uh, learn something and maybe have a fun while we do it. So let's get started. So first question is going to be about overridden methods and default values of arguments. So what do I mean by that? Let's print some, uh, some code, let's write some code. So first, I start by defining a base class, and this base class has a method display that takes an argument. You can notice there is a default value for this argument. And then in the method, very straightforward, I print to the console base class implementation dash value and the value of the argument. Then, as the name base class could suggest, I implement a subclass that inherits from base class. I implement an overridden method display value. And this time, you can see I change two things. First, I change what I print. This time, I print <coughs> subclass implementation. And also, I change the value of uh, the default value of the argument. Now it's time to use this code. So, first, I create an instance of my subclass. Notice I store it in a variable of type base class. And then on this variable, on this instance, I call the method display. Notice also I'm not passing an argument, so I'm relying on the default value, the default value that I have defined above. And so if you look at this code, it would stand to reason that this should print subclass implementation dash value 100. My question to you, and we'll see by show of hands, is do you think this code prints this to the console? So if you think it does, raise your hand. Some people are raising their hand. Close to 50%, maybe slightly above, okay? If you think it doesn't, please raise your hand. Okay, so there is a small minority that thinks it doesn't and the small minority is correct, because this doesn't print that. Actually, if you run this code, it will print subclass implementation value 10, which is extremely weird, because it's kind of like mixing and matching. We have some part that come from the overridden method, and another part, the default value for the argument, that comes from the base method. So that looks weird. But as always, there is an explanation. And the explanation is that in my code, I'm actually mixing two different mechanisms. First, we have the implementation of the method, so the code inside the method, that will be dynamically resolved, meaning it will depend on the type of the instance at runtime. So this is what we are used to, and this is the, the cornerstone of uh, polymorphism. But on the other hand, the default value of the argument is statically resolved, which means that it depends on the type of the variable at compile time. And this is one of the most, we could say, um, confusing, error-prone syntax in Swift because you get no warning at all, but you are mixing two mechanisms that are arguably uh, not meant to be mixed together. So just to show you a few more examples, so we've seen this code. If I were to have my instance B of a static type subclass, then print what we expect. And if you rely on type in France, instance actually also of type subclass, and so it will also print what you would expect. So what's the takeaway from this first question? Uh, simply don't provide the default value when a method can be overridden, because you're very likely to shoot yourself in the foot. So when you're working with uh, a class, be very wary of default value of arguments for methods, unless you are implementing a private or a final method, because they can be overridden, and so it's very safe. That was for the first question. Moving on to the second one, it's going to be about constant properties and mutating methods. So this time, I'm implementing a struct. In this struct, I have a let property, which is an age of type int. And then I am defining a mutating method, increment age. And the question I want to ask you is, do you think there is a way we could make this method increment age actually increment the age? So, Kind of interesting question because we have two things conflicting here. On the one hand, we have age being a let constant, so it stands to reason that no, you can change it. 
But on the other hand, the method is marked mutating. So maybe mutating would open the door to something a bit weird. <laughs> so once again, by show of hands, raise your hand if you think we can implement increment age in a way that it will increment the age. So I see some hands are raising. Seems to be a small minority that says yes. If you think it's not possible, raise your hand. So majority seems to say no. And once again, minority wins, because it's possible. <laughs> of course, not like that, because if you do that, you get a compiler error, you cannot change the uh, property. But let's try and see what we could do with a var of type person. <coughs> if I create a person and I store it in a var, I will be able to call a mutating method on it, because you need a var to call a mutating method. But you can do other things with a var. For instance, you can assign it a new value. You could assign it a new person, and for the age of the new person, you could take the age of the current person and add one. This code is valid. So, can we try to take this code and make it work in this method? Of course, this, this doesn't build because there is no variable person for now, so we need to change it. So, on the right hand, it's easy person.age. We can do self.age, we have access to the age. The question <laughs> is, what are we actually going to assign? And the answer is, we're actually just going to assign self. It might seem surprising, but this is absolutely valid Swift. This is something that's known as reassigning self. And now, if you call increment age on the person, you will get a new value in the variable that will have the age be incremented. So what are the takeaways here? As I said, this technique is known as reassigning self. By the way, I learned about it on the website opsheet.io. If you don't know it, check it out. They have really good content. And the takeaway is that this resource is some tricky code, so I'm not arguing you should <coughs> do things like that. But remember that whenever you're calling a mutating method on a var, potentially it can change anything inside of it, maybe even an ID. So if you're working, for instance, with a closed source SDK, this is the kind of weird behavior that could happen. And what's happening is that we basically have an, uh, an assignation that's happening without the equal sign in your code. So, a lot of potential for confusion once again. And for the last question, we're going to talk about empty enums and uh, all the very interesting behaviors they can have. So, let's take a look at some code. I'm defining an empty enum, so it's an enum that has no cases. And then I'm defining a function, I call it magic, generic fun function, takes an argument of type empty, returns t. And there is an empty body. So I haven't forgotten to write something. This is the code I want to, to write. And once again, I want to ask you, do you think this code builds? And just like before, we have two things that are kind of conflicting if we want to infer the answer. Because on the one hand, we have a function that says it returns something and just does no things. That seems a bit weird. But on the other hand, we have an enum that is empty. And that seems equally weird. So could it be that maybe there is something special happening here? So once again, by show of hands, raise, raise your hand if you think this builds, if you think this is valid Swift code. <coughs> See? Okay, seems to be a small minority that says yes. And raise your hand if you think this doesn't build, and this is a clear compiler error, this makes no sense. Okay, actually there was a bit more yes this time, and so this time the majority wins because as surprising as it can be, this is absolutely valid Swift code. <coughs> of course, the big question is, why is it valid Swift code? And for that, I'm going to show you another piece of code that's going to seem like it has nothing to do with the topic, but trust me, it has everything to do with the topic. So, I'm back to my struct person that we saw just before, and I'm doing something very weird with it. I take an empty array of person, and on it, I call the method all satisfied <coughs> with the predicate the age is greater than 18. If you run this code, you will find that it returns true. And it might seem weird, it might even seem like a bug. It's not a bug <coughs> on the standard library. It's actually something that is absolutely uh, mathematically sound and something called a vacuous truth. And the idea is that since the array is empty, it's impossible <coughs> to provide a counterexample of the property. And so the property must be true. And it's actually the exact same reasoning that's happening with my magic code. Since my function takes as an argument an empty enum and this enum has no case, it's impossible to provide a value for the argument. So it's impossible to provide a valid call site. And so I can just do whatever I want in the implementation. Swift knows the method cannot be called. And so it doesn't complain because it knows this is actually unreachable code. 
And this enum that I call empty actually exists in the Swift language, except Swift don't call it empty. It calls it never. And you might have encountered never when writing Swift code. For instance, you might have noticed that if you have a result with an error type of never or a publisher of an error type of never, the compiler doesn't force you to deal with the potential error case. And the reason is that since never is an empty enum, the compiler can prove that the error case is an impossible code path, and so you don't have to deal with it. Another example of using never in Swift is the function fatal error, so whose purpose is to crash <coughs> your application. If you have ever looked, you might have seen that this function fatal error, as surprising as it might be, has a return value. This return value is of type never, and it's there on purpose. It's to indicate to the compiler that it's impossible for this function to return, and so the compiler knows that any kind of code that is after this function is dead code. So once again, what's the takeaway here? Is that never or any possible empty enum is a special type that lets us represent impossible code path. And the Swift compiler is actually smart enough to understand it, and it will adapt the error and the warnings. It will omit consequently to you using never. And finally, never can also be very helpful when you're prototyping and just, you just want to make your code build and so you don't want to say to the compiler, I know this doesn't work for now, but pretend it does. And it's actually, it's actually exactly what Xcode does when it generates a method and puts a precondition failure inside of it, because precondition failure also returns never. And finally, if you like the math, the mathematical aspects of things, uh, you might want to check out something called the Curie Award Correspondence, which is the mathematical frameworks behind the properties of never I've just shown you. That's all I have for you today. So thank you all for your attention. If you want more content from me, you can follow me on Twitter and on YouTube. And I work for a very cool app called Photo Room. And you can get it on the App Store or check out our company website. Thank you.